All right, so the figure here shows a conveyor belt. The top surface of that belt is traveling at a constant speed to the right and upward. And suppose that we place a block of ice at location A. That block of ice is slippery, but it's not frictionless. So after placing that block at location A, a few moments later, the, you can find the block at location B. So what I'd like for you to do right now is draw a free body diagram of the block of ice at location A immediately after we release it from rest. All right, so take a moment. You can pause the video and go ahead and try to draw that free body diagram. All right, so here's our conveyor belt and our block of ice sitting on that conveyor belt. The top surface of that conveyor belt is moving upward and to the right like so. And our objective is to draw a free body diagram, right? What is a free body diagram? Free body diagram shows the forces acting on a body. Yes? Now, just for the sake of being complete here, what is a force again? A force is something that provides a push or a pull, right? Just to put in very simple words here. Force is something that push or pulls, right? A force is something that has magnitude and it has direction. In other words, a force is a vector, right? And finally, a force is an interaction between bodies. In other words, a force is one body pushing against or pulling on another body. Now, whenever we draw a free body diagram, we should ask ourselves a question. That is, a free body diagram of what? In this case, the answer is fairly simple, but often it's not, and often it's a point of confusion. In our case, we're drawing the free body diagram of the block of ice, right? And what we want to do is we want to depict the forces acting on that block of ice. So the first force I'm going to pick is, let's see, how about the weight? Right? Forces are vectors. I'm going to depict them as arrows on here. In this case, the arrow acts straight down. Right, Force of gravity, or weight is the force of gravity. It's an interaction between the block and the earth. Right, Earth is pulling the weight straight down, so this arrow goes straight down. And whenever I have a force on a free body diagram, I also have to label it. So I'm going to label my weight as W, symbol W. And I'm going to put an arrow directly above it to indicate that it's a vector. Vectors have to be indicated as vectors. They have to be indicated by arrows. And they have to be labeled as vectors. So I've got a symbol here, W. And I put a little arrow above it to indicate that it is a vector. All right, in my class, if you don't put the arrow above it, it's not a vector. It's not labeled as a vector. And it's not correct. All right, so how about other forces? What other forces do we have on this block of ice? Now, now recall, forces are interactions between bodies over here, right? That usually means, you know, things that are actually directly in contact, pushing or pulling on the body. So what's in contact with the ice block? Well, it's the conveyor belt, right? The conveyor belt is pushing or pulling or tugging or yanking or jerking or whatever it's doing on this body. Now I'm going to split this force coming from the conveyor belt acting on the block of ice into two pieces. One of those pieces is a component of the force uh, that's acting perpendicular to the surface of the belt. This is a force that's keeping the ice block from penetrating through the belt. We often call this the normal force. Normal in this case doesn't mean not abnormal. Normal means perpendicular. Because if the belt surface is this purple line right here, then the normal force would be perpendicular to that belt. Yeah, you see it? Now once again, I have to label my vectors. So I'll give this vector a symbol N. And again, because it's a vector, my label has to have a little arrow above it just to indicate that it, it is a vector. Again, there's a normal force. It prevents the ice block from penetrating through the belt. That's its purpose. All right, so there's the perpendicular component of the force from the belt acting on the block. I'm also going to say there's a component of the force tangent to the belt. 
So let me start drawing that force here, like so. Now this is the force of friction. This is the force of two surfaces rubbing against each other. Now somewhere in this problem I told you that the ice block is slippery, but it's not frictionless. It's not completely slippery. There is some rubbing here between the two surfaces, the surface of the ice block and the surface of the conveyor belt that's creating a force, that rubbing, these two surfaces rubbing against each other is creating a force acting, it's a force acting on the block, the ice block. So my next question for you is which way does that friction force act? I'm telling you there's a, there's a friction force, it's tangent to the belt. Is that friction force acting upward and to the right or is it acting downward and to the left? Think about it for a second. All right, well, here's one way to make the argument. One can say that friction opposes motion. Yeah, you probably heard that before. And if we look at the motion of the ice block, I'm up here in the upper left corner here, at one, mo at one moment, the ice block is down here on the left, and a short while later, the block is, has moved up the belt, right? So the motion of the ice block has upward and to the right, so therefore, Therefore, <laughs> um, the friction force opposing that motion has to be downward and, and to the left. What do you think about that argument? All right, so let's think about this a little more deeply. So when I uh, think about forces, I often try to embody them. <laughs> embody them, meaning put them in, in my own bodily terms here. So I've got a surface right here. It represents the ramp and another surface that represents the block and these surfaces are rubbing against each other, right? They're rubbing against each other. I like to do this because I can feel those forces. I can feel it. In fact, let me just get something a little bit better rather than my hands. Let me have a, a piece of wood right here. That represents the belt and I've got a block, right? So I got these two things on here and for they're both pieces of wooden block, wooden belt if you will. I put uh, some some sandpaper on the block just so you can really get a lot of friction there. In fact, you can <laughs> you can hear the friction as these two as these two surfaces are sliding against each other, right? So here we have the belt moving upward, upward and to the right, yes. And then we have maybe I should pull back a little bit. Belt moving upward and to the right, and then we have the block resting on the belt. Well, maybe not resting, but the block sitting on the belt. So as the belt is moving up, which way is it creating a force on the block? Yeah, you can embody it, you can see it here. So if I'm moving the belt upward and to the right, what's it doing to the block? Can you sort of almost feel it yourself? I can certainly feel it myself. If I were to let go of the block with my right hand here, if I were to let, let go of the block, then what would happen? as the belt is moving upward. Well, it would just pull the block right along with it. Yes. So I need my hand, in order to keep the block down here, I need my hand to hold down the block and, and hold it to your left. Right? So therefore, the friction from the belt acting on the block has to be upward and to the right, yeah? The belt is pulling that block upward and to the right. Therefore, we got the direction of this friction force wrong, right? Let me erase that thing. The friction force should be pulling upward and to the right. Let me label the friction force as an F with the arrow above it. And this tells me my little saying down here is not quite right. Friction force doesn't oppose motion. What it does is it opposes relative motion, right? It opposes the sliding action between those two surfaces. It, so there you have it. There's the free body diagram of the ice block on the uh, conveyor belt.